Good evening, everyone. It is Tuesday, June 23rd. It is now 7.02. I'd like to call the meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. Do I have a motion? So moved. So, second. Uh, moved by Ms. Kerr, seconded by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. And before we start, I want to remind everyone that we are uh, working under the Governor's Declaration of Public Health Emergency and that this uh, meeting will be recorded and broadcast on Situate Community. If you'd like to participate, you can dial in um, using the following numbers, 425-436-3608, or five, oops, did I say five? Dyslexic, six three, six three. All right, let me, let me try that again. 425-436-3608, it's better like this. Um, or 425-436-3668 or 425-436-6300. The access code is 817-651, pound sign, and you'll be put in a waiting room and Michelle will be letting people in for question and answer um, as appropriate. Um, Sorry? Nancy will take care Nancy's, a, oh, oh, our Q&A specialist. All right, Nancy Hold is now double dipping as our finance director and our waiting room attendant. <laughs> um, the only thing, that before we get started, I just want to say I'm very excited. This is my first day um, as the chair, uh, and I'm looking forward to it. And I wanted to just ask the board to, in the next week or so, um, spend some time thinking about fiscal 21, other than reacting to COVID issues, what your three to five priorities might be. Um, and then we can come together and um, also think about a date where we can have a single purpose meeting to review those priorities and um, get going in the calendar year. Um, and with that, I'd like to turn it over to Jim Bedreau for his town administrator's report. So uh, a few things uh, from yesterday morning to today, no new cases in situate again, so we've got two days in a row. We are on a very good run. The state positive uh, percentage of cases is right now between one and two percent. So keep it up, very, very good run. Uh, as we discussed yesterday, we're in phase two, step two, which means you can now go inside restaurants. There is no limit on the capacity, except what you can social distance. So as long as they can keep tables either six feet apart, I'll provide a barrier between tables. Uh, they can put as many people in the restaurant as their space will allow. Uh, outside dining will continue at this point. I don't think they're gonna get the capacity they want inside. I'm still waiting for Riva to see if they're gonna be out front. I haven't gotten a plan from them. They have expressed an interest, but they haven't provided it yet. So as of right now, it'll still be that block in front of the galley until we hear differently. Um, it seems to be very popular. I haven't gotten a lot of complaints. Uh, so we'll keep monitoring it. We've got to do a little more tweaking on the uh, closures and the detours. I think there was a couple of issues that I had last week with that that I met with Chief Thompson. So we're going to keep adjusting that. But it seems to be very, going very well. Uh, other services available in Phase 2, Step 2. Uh, close contact personal services, including massage and body treatments, nail salons, skin care services, including facials, peels, serums, <laughs> Botox, and fillers. Makeup salons and personal trainers are also available. Each of these has... Restrictions, almost all of them are by appointment. Uh, you can also increase office capacity from 25 to 50% of the uh, capacity of the office. We're, we can get around that because we have critical employees, but it is an issue for regular office space. The drawback of starting phase two, step two now, is that step three will now not commence until at least July 6th. So originally going into restaurants was gonna be phase three on June 29th because the numbers have been so good, the governor advanced it into phase two, step two. So now phase three will not start until July 6th. And that's the next, one of the quirks of what that is, that's all your uh, youth sports games. So they can practice now, but they can't play games until phase three. So that could throw off some of their schedules, but We'll deal with it. Uh, phase three openings can be found on mass.gov slash reopening. Uh, town meeting is this Saturday, nine o'clock at the football field. Uh, please be early, wear sunscreen, it's gonna be hot. Um, for all those out there so inclined, you cannot wear heels if you're sitting on the field. Hmm. You can wear them in the stands, but you cannot wear heels if you will be on the field. 
because it's bad for the field. So again, mm -hmm. any of you that are so inclined, uh, flat sneakers. Uh, I wouldn't dress too, um, too dressed up. I think it's going to be hot. The turf field does have a tendency to get hot after a little while. So we're going to start at 9, uh, and hopefully we'll get through it in a short time. The advisory book's amended book with the updated budget, the updated capital, and the consent agenda is on the town website. Uh, from the water department, we're still talking about conserving water. Uh, we're up 22% from the same week last year, this week to last week. And we're averaging more than 2 million gallons a day last week. Uh, again, that's up 22% over the same time last year. Uh, in addition, this week, we've taken well 22 offline. Uh, the well has experienced a mechanical failure and the yield has been down. Luckily, we had a contractor on doing regular maintenance on another well. We've been able to put them over there. Uh, they're hoping to have it back up and running by the end of the week. Um, but we're still using more water than we normally use this time of year and more water than we should be using this time of year. So it's imperative that people follow the guidelines. And we say no outdoor watering between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. That includes washing your cars. That includes filling your pools. It's not just watering your lawn. So people need to conserve water, not just because the well's down, but because we're using quite a bit of water. Um, the water department issued over 50 warnings over the past couple weeks. Uh, this past week, they have started issuing citations. So people who are violating the water restrictions will now at this point get a citation. Um, do not try to tell us that you're using well water when you're not, because it's very easy for us to tell. <laughs> they just do a simple test for chlorine, and if it's chlorinated, it's not coming out of your well. Um, so, uh, but the guys are out, they are doing it. I think we have guys at night coming in now. Um, They're coming at five and they do fluoride tests to pick up the water. So uh, we are checking and we will issue violations now at this <coughs> point for people violating the water. Uh, last but not least, just something to put on your radar screen, um, trash. We currently have Two employees of DPW working seven days a week just picking up trash barrels around town. Um, this, today we had two crews of two because the trash truck filled up. We had to send another crew out to get the trash barrels. Uh, Kevin sent me pictures Saturday morning of barrels at Minor Beach with trash just stacked all around the barrels, all four barrels being full. Uh, as of last week, we've sold 619 fuel transfer station stickers this year than last year. Sean McCarthy is doing an analysis, but I think we're going to find out that our trash tonnage has not gone down 619 transfer station stickers. So we strongly suspect that these barrels are getting filled up by people putting their household trash in the barrels. Um, we are constantly getting calls. We need more barrels at the beaches. We need more barrels here. We need more barrels there. The more barrels we put out, the more they get filled and the more trash we get. Um, so at this point, I'm just kind of putting it on your radar screen to think about but I think we're gonna start having a discussion at some point about a set of more barrels, uh, maybe actually have a few barrels out there because we think we're getting a lot of household trash. Ms. Madam Chair, may I ask a question? Yes, please. Um, when Sean does that analysis, the 619 fewer stickers, you know, that might not necessarily be 619 fewer families. It could be that many folks have more people staying home and they don't need two stickers for two cars. Um, so can we sort of factor in mm -hmm. whether or not it's, you know, down by family? Do, do we keep track of it's two stickers per family or would you be able to do that? Um, I could ask Pam because they handle the selling of the stickers online. Okay. I don't know if they have that capability, but we can give it a shot. Because the numbers just don't really align with the number of families that are requesting aid and going to the food pan. You know what I mean? You would, you would think some of that would correlate um, so I'd be curious to see that we, we do check the barrels too for household trash the guys check the trash to see what's in there but you know people are people, most people are smart enough not to put a return envelope in there with their address <laughs> on it yeah um, well and everybody has more people home <laughs> Mr. Vignani? yeah um, a couple things um, that seems like an awful lot as well what, do you know how many total we usually sell I mean, is that 5% down or 20% down? Yeah, I don't have yeah that seems like a really large number. Um, I was wondering if we can put some signs up, you know, because I've, I've been a proponent of getting more trash barrels out there because I hate it when it's overflowing. Um, but something along the lines that says, if this is full, take it home. 
you know, just don't leave your broken chairs and everything piled up all around there. You know, this is, we've got enough barrels here to handle stuff, but everyone can take trash home and keep their, you know, keep our beaches clean without you making know, I, it disgusting. Facebook last week, and I know I can't go by Facebook, there was a picture <laughs> of someone threw a lobster trap on one of the barrels. Right. Uh, a lobster trap. Uh, I can tell you, in, in NOAA, we had Gaffield Park, we built the park, we put two decorative barrels in the park, and people would fill the barrels up and then just leave all their trash all around the barrels in the park. And there were five 55-gallon drum barrels in the parking lot. So we removed the barrels from the park, and people took their trash out, the trash barrels in the parking lot. They just, just laziness. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, other question on the water. So have we had any more occurrences of brown water? Because it seems like we're at the, the peak you know, the peak since, usage earlier. Since we've asked people to report, we have not gotten brown water complaints. We've gotten a couple of discolored and yellow tea, I guess, wheat tea colored complaints, but no actual. Well, I'm gonna call that brown. Uh, <laughs> not what we've seen in the past, Tony, where yeah. people are posting pictures of sludge okay. in their bathroom. Well, that's, that's great news, right? Because this is when we would see it, and we would see it very heavily. The complaints, the videos, the, um, you know, the occurrences of The next this. two weeks will be the big... Well, if we're up to 2 million gallons a day right away, it doesn't wait. It would have been... Five, usually, 4th of July? Yeah, and remember, um, <coughs> we, we've only done one round of flushing. If we have the water again this year, we want to try to flush everything again like we did last year and just keep improving the system. Yeah, but my point is, if we did 2.5 million a gallon, you know, like gallons a day, that would have started up already. Oh yeah, it definitely would have been. In, we've actually allowed some fire flow tests during the day, um, say in May, just to see what would occur. We allowed a fire flow test for the senior center and another one at the library, testing things out. And we did realize we had no brown water from it. The other telltale sign was the fire go green. Um, they used a lot of water on that. And before we'd have brown water in mind, and we didn't have any. So. So I don't think it's solved. I don't think it's gone from 100 to zero. No. But it's definitely gotten considerably better because we would be hearing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we know, better. as we talked about last week, we know those streets um, where they have the small pipes they're going to replace. And uh, I asked Kevin for a, a list. Uh, what they're doing right now is they're actually going out and inspecting each one of those streets. Uh, one street they found was a private way that had just been repaved, so they're probably not going to force those people to get a new water pipe. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we'll get that to you. So those people are still going to always have problems until we can either replace those pipes or put some sort of flushing gate at the end of a dead end main and get the stuff out of, the, out of the end of that pipe. So the only other uh, question I had is the citation. That's $100, right? 50 and then 100. 50 first time, 100 after that. Okay. Yeah. So those of you that are watching, we're asking you to conserve water. And there's no more warnings. <laughs> so we are, we're going to be giving tickets of 50 or $100 if we see your sprinklers on. I mean, that, that's the main culprit, right, Kevin? Automatic sprinklers um, on the days that you're not supposed to be on. Um, you know, we've got to conserve our water and make sure that we're, um, um, you know, not running low, particularly with this well down for a week or so. Yeah, it's, it's not like it's hard to tell. I mean, right. You have an ice cream lot and something goes by at 5 o'clock in the morning, the street's soaking wet. It's, yeah. Great. Thanks, Jim. Uh, anyone else have questions for Ms. Conley? Thank you. Um, this is a water-related, but it's it's a, probably a bad time to bring it up, but apparently there's a lot of dust being kicked up at the construction site, specifically at the senior center. Are the contractors supposed to mm -hmm. do anything to keep... Yeah, there's dust control in the contracts. So. All right. Well, I guess it's been kind of dusty. I, I know it's been very dry, so I, I understand why, but if that could be looked at. Okay. Mr. Goodrich? Yeah, um, back on the, on the transfer the station, the stickers, those 619, back, I guess back to that point of, the, of householding, is there any way to, to also see if, I mean, if somebody has had a, it's been 10 years in a row and then suddenly they don't have one? I mean, there could be some confusion of how, how am I getting it during this COVID crisis? Can I go in? Can I not go in? Is there any way to say, wait a minute? It would have, I mean, again, Kevin doesn't give them out, so yeah. we'd have to check with the treasurer and see how they keep those records. Yeah, just in so case. For the past couple of weeks, we've been, you know, we were a lot lenient on these stickers. Um, past two weeks, we've been a lot harder on the stickers. We're not accepting, you know, we're making people get the stickers to come in now. Um, right. And 
this, this week we started it's a policy it's a sticker we're not coming in right so we you know we'll see if we get a, a flow of people so if there's a hundred two hundred people mm -hmm. sent a letter to <coughs> here's the application or some way to explain if they've been consistent um users we'll, we'll since all of a sudden yeah do you know off the top of your head what she tracks that in is it um it's the old system it's the you know, old dos based system and they sell it by um, whether or not the car is registered here mm -hmm. and, and, and it's not they have to bring in a registration and prove that they own the property that the tax bill I think it's going to be hard to track it back from non-residents. Yeah. There might be something they could do with the residents to see who the purchase. We'll take a look. Okay. Anyone else for Jim? All right. Thank you. Um, I just want to reiterate that you can get. Be, uh, uh, dump stickers online. You don't need to come in. You yeah. can fill those out for the most part online, and that they are not no longer being lenient. Um, and that it uh, maybe by next week, if we could have analysis of where we were last year at this time versus, so we can just kind of track see if that's improved at all in the next couple of weeks. Um, that being complete, we will move on to our 715, which is to update and discuss the 4th of July holiday plans with our Chief of Police, Mark Thompson. Is he on line? Good evening. Oh. Hello, uh, Police Chief. Would you like to um, tell us what's in store for this strange holiday weekend amidst COVID and a long weekend? Sure. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, you know, there's a lot coming together this year. Uh, I think a lot of people are incredibly anxious to get out of their houses and um, enjoy some time with family and friends. So we'll certainly be encouraging that. Uh, but as you indicated, it's definitely, you know, it, it's a difficult time with, with COVID and we just want to make sure that everybody is, uh, you know, being responsible and we really want to promote family fun. Um, we try to put together a comprehensive public safety plan as we've done over the past couple of years to make sure that, that really we achieve that throughout the community. Um, consistent with last year, our recommendation would be that the public beaches remain open. Um, the plan that we have in place, I think, will be able to provide uh, coverage throughout all the beaches throughout town, including Cumberock. Um, certainly over the past few years, I think we've seen a reduction in some of the disorderly behavior and public drinking that we've seen, particularly in Cumberock. Um, as I'm sure you all remember, we've had issues over the, over the years with a lot of people coming from, particularly kids coming from other places. and and making things challenging down there. So over the past couple of years, I think we've really made great inroads with that. I hope to see the same thing again this year. Um, but with that being said, we'll continually, continually monitor um, activity on all the beaches. And if we see any of the public safety conditions start to deteriorate, um, we would look to make a determination in real time to close the beach and clear the beach um, and make sure we keep everybody safe. Like uh, years past as well, we're working in conjunction with the fire uh, Department of Harbor Mass for Board of Health uh, to make sure that we're we're all on the same page as far as how we're getting public safety out there and you know really leveraging the strong partnerships we have with the Mass Environmental Police and the U.S. Coast Guard in terms of what things are looking like on the waterways. Great, thank you. Uh, does uh, the board have any questions for the police chief? Uh, Ms. Conley? Yes, just one question. On your memo, it says Front Street will be closed. Is that the entirety of Front Street or just the part where the galley is? Well, my anticipation, I guess, is, is that if it's like it is right now, it will just be that Otis to Beale section we have right now. Okay. It seems like the Front Street closures continue to be a bit fluid. Okay. Um, so I think that there is a note, uh, but I guess we'll see where we stand in another week or so. Okay, thank you. Mr. Vignani? Oh. Uh, Chief, I just noticed that the high tide is at um, a bad time this year. Isn't it like about 10 o'clock at night? No, midday. Was it midnight? Midday. Midday, but also in the evening. Yeah. Um, in, in the evening. Right. What, what's the plan for that if, you know, Hummer Rock and those beaches get much smaller with, with some people out there? Well, that's, you know, that's kind of one of the challenges. On the one hand, it will naturally start to, to clear the beaches as, as there's less beach to be there as the night goes on. Um, but that is one of the concerns, and speaking with Chief Murphy on the fire side, the less beach you have and people anticipate that that's going to happen, anyone who's, who's trying to do a bonfire or any fires in general, um, those get pushed up and fire work gets pushed up. 
Um, and, and with that as a segue, I'd actually like to kind of reiterate a couple of public safety points that we have each year. Um, and the key one being that bonfires are not allowed. Um, so that's something that several years ago we could face bonfires are not allowed. Um, we'll be out there looking for those in advance and, and looking to make sure that those are stopped before they start. Um, small cooking fires per national laws, uh, max three foot in diameter, 16 feet or 16 inches in height are um, allowed, but anything outside of that compliance um, is required to determine determined is not in compliance with that, those will be distinguished um, and folks could potentially face fines uh, for having any fires that are larger than that. Any other, any other questions? I have a different issue. I don't know. Any? Is he done? Yeah, go ahead. Tony, done? Um, Chief, hi, it's uh, Maura. Um, I love your Operation Dry Water and that it uh, coincides with the holiday weekend. What is your plan to, market's a bad word, um, <laughs> advise, you know, boaters out there of this initiative? Thank you. So Operation Dry Water uh, is a nationwide campaign. Um, Sister Police Department has taken part in the past couple of years. We're fortunate because we have such strong partnerships with the Mass Environmental Police and the U.S. Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. Operation Dry Water basically looks to uh, educate and provide enforcement on the water for boating under these forms. So over the course of the next several days, in addition to Operation Dry Water and being able to get information out to people about that, um, we'll also be getting messaging about our other restrictions and other guidelines that we want to make sure people are aware of. Um, so we'll be using print media, social media, uh, direct messaging to, to folks in our different stand groups, so our different neighborhood groups throughout the community. Um, and we'll really try to make sure that there's really high visibility um, on all of these different things. So Operation Drywater certainly being one of them, um, but the other pieces as well. So the COVID-19 guidelines that are in effect for public spaces but all the beaches in terms of face mask requirement, social distancing, um, you know, group sizes under 10 people, making sure that you're spaced out 12 feet more, um, we'll, we'll put those out there. Um, and then obviously the big things that we all always look at in terms of disorderly behavior, public consumption of alcohol, marijuana, underage drinking, dangerous behavior by youth, um, and you know, fireworks being illegal in Massachusetts, including spark there. So, um, we really have a pretty comprehensive list that we're going to try to get out to folks and make sure that everyone has that visibility in advance of the holiday. And really, these things are, are true throughout the entire holiday uh, and summer season. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Um, Chief, I just want to clarify one thing I wasn't sure on the notes. Are there, is there any parking going to be allowed at Hummer Rock after 4 o'clock on the 3rd? I wasn't sure I read that right. There, there are spots that are still available, although typically the way our operation works, we wind up using a lot of the spaces, particularly uh, on the Marshfield Ave in front of uh, the beach opening, and a good portion, if not all, of the Hummer Rock public beach parking lot as well. Okay. Um, there are additional spaces that are still available as you go up Marshfield Ave, um, but we do wind up closing down a lot and taking a lot of those, and in part, um, that's the ability to have a triage area emergency evacuation zone if anything happens there that we need that space. Uh, so we work in coordination with the fire department and wind up closing that down. Um, so we'll anticipate that again, typically 3.30 to 4 o'clock, we look to have that done so that we can have you know, our operations for Hummer Rock in place. Okay, great, thank you. And obviously, would you, I'm sure you are, but we just make sure the Harbor Master is looped into the, um, um, to the, what's it called, the water? Um, dry dry yeah dry the, water. the dry water sorry <laughs> um, campaign yes, absolutely. great thank you um, do we have anyone waiting to ask any questions No one waiting? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, uh, Chief Thompson, and uh, we look forward to a happy 4th of July or 3rd of July. Session is over. <laughs> That's right. And please remember to pick up your trash on the beach. <laughs> um, we'll now go on. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to a good holiday. Thank you.
We'll now go on to our next item, which is an exception uh, acceptance of donation from the Veterans Advisory Council. Is Kim Stewart joining us? Kim? She's there. She's there. All right. We'll wait right for her. Hey, Kim. Welcome. The Good evening, everybody. How Hi. are how are you? <laughs> we uh, we'd love to hear about your uh, donation. So, um, the gentleman that donated a generous amount of money to the Veterans Advisory Council wishes to remain anonymous. Um, however, he did um, cite the collaboration between the Veterans Council and Citizen Committee Christmas um, over the past couple of months. The Citizen Committee Christmas funded a postcard that went to all of the veterans in town offering. Uh, various services, including tax pickups, uh, home cooked meals that we um, collaborate with the caterer with, and masks. Um, and a lot of the veterans took advantage of that, which was wonderful, and it was a great partnership between the Veterans Council and Community Christmas. So, in that spirit, um, this gentleman made a, a nice donation. Again, he would like to remain on that. That's so generous and so thoughtful. Does the board have any comments or questions? Nope, just thank you, Kim. All right. Thank you. Uh, and okay, I well, thank you guys. Thank you for all you do. I'm not from Andrew. I'll, I'll be introducing myself at some oh. point. <laughs> all right, thank you. Um, and I just want to point out, uh, uh, Kim won't toot her, her own horn, but uh, she's been instrumental in providing that um, that liaison between the Situa Community Christmas and the Vets Advisory, and it's been exceptionally helpful to so much of our community in, the, in all of this trial. So thank you, Kim. Um, do I have a motion to? Yes. Move the Board of Selectmen accept a donation for $250 to the Veterans Services Advisory Council in support of Veterans Services. Moved by Mr. Vignani. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, Ms. Connolly. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? 5-0 um, acceptance. Thank you, Kim. And thank you to the donor. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Good night, night good Kim. Night. <laughs> That's a very good point. And thank you very much to the generous anonymous donor. We appreciate it. And I know that uh, Situate Community Christmas and the vets appreciate it. Uh, the next item we have is to discuss and vote on award of a DPW contract. Um, Sean McCarthy is here. I think you're going to have to stay there, Sean. Here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you get him, uh, Seth? Uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, it's really a renewal uh, contract. The water department uses potassium hydroxide uh, in its water treatment uh, at the plant and at its wells. And they use a uh, cooperative that a lot of the local towns um, take advantage of. And the bid is put out by the Eastern Massachusetts Chemical Cooperative. Um, so they take advantage of a, of a state bid uh, that's put out and uh, municipalities can elect to go with these bidders uh, to provide chemicals. Um, they use several different chemicals from different vendors. This one happens to be potassium hydroxide, which is used to adjust pH uh, in the water to keep it from becoming corrosive. Um, the price has gone up about three cents since 2017 when it was last bid. <laughs> this was the same vendor uh, who won the bid in 2017. So we've renewed it twice. We've met the three-year maximum. It's time to renew uh, a contract. And this is a 10-year contract? This will be another three-year. Three-year contract. If we choose to renew. And the bidder elects to maintain its price. That's part right. of the deal, too. So that kind of locks them in for three years. Thank you. Anyone have questions for Sean? No. Would you like All a motion? Right. All right. I'll take a motion. <laughs> Move the Board of Selectmen award the contract to supply potassium hydroxide, 45% uh, to Situate Water Treatment Plant at a unit price of $2.79.98 per gallon for bulk deliveries over 3,000 gallons and a unit price of $3.0623 per gallon for de deliveries less than 3,000 gallons as outlined in the Eastern Massachusetts Chemical Cooperative to Borden and Remington Corp, not to exceed $120,000. A motion by Mr. Vignani. Before we take a second, I forgot to ask for any Q&A, if anyone has um, 
from the public would like to call in and comment. Today's session has started. <laughs> All right, we like that music, but okay. No one's like waiting, I mean, it's been indicated. Today's session is over. Do we have a second? Second. <laughs> Mr. Goodrich has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, that uh, passes 5-0. Thank you, Sean. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. I looked up the um, stickers uh, when oh. I had an opportunity a few minutes ago. We sold about 5,300 last year. That falls under households. So it falls for a single sticker and the senior discounted stickers. The treasurer does keep track of second stickers per household. So it is a number I could put my hands on. This is that's reporting I do for DEP anyways, right. uh, annually. But hmm. We did start passing out, oh, maybe two months ago, actual paper copies to drivers that came to the booth because they would say, I don't have a computer or the online oh. system. So we were providing them, here, fill this out, drop it in the mail. They're turning them around in a day or two, you'll have your sticker. Um, just trying to make that happen. Yeah. Um, but both C and D and trash are up 16 and 17 percent numbers tonnage from last year the last two months I a lot of people I think we'll be having more conversation about that <laughs> soon thanks Sean for looking around okay. thanks Sean um, all right we will move along to we have um, two special event applications but I am understand that the first one the fashion show has been withdrawn um, that's primarily because it's it exceeds the gathering um, permitted under the phase that we are in. That's one of my questions. As much as exciting as it was as a proposal, um, I think we'll see that again down the road when people can gather. Would you like to comment? No, I mean, when we had a real chance to look at it, it really comes down to phase three, which is events. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fit under retail. It doesn't fit under restaurants. So it just, I really didn't get a chance to look at it until yesterday afternoon so yeah so we're sure that's a disappointment to the folks at out of the blue it's a great idea and I'm sure we'll revisit it as soon as it's safe for us to do that so after July, right now after July 6th would be, yep. be allowed I'll see um, so that means we are moving on to the proposal for a drive-in movie at St. Mary and St. George Coptic Optic um, Orthodox Church for July 11th and I believe Aubrey Schwartz is waiting Yep. Madam Chair, just yep. to let you know in your packets you have some additional information oh, right. on this topic. Board of Health provided some um, uh, specific sector standards for driving movies, and we have some additional information and approvals from the applicants. Great. Thank you for right. alerting us to that, Michelle. Is Aubrey on the line? Yep, she should be. Well, I'm here, and I'm actually going to let my dad take most of the and taking care of all okay. the details. Uh, that's okay. Uh, sure, the board, I'll introduce you to Jim Schwartz. Or, oh, actually, Jim, I don't know if that's your last name. <laughs> yeah, sorry, James Burke. <laughs> okay. um, hey, great. Hi. Why don't you tell us about the letting plans? Me take care of the, letting me take care of the details is the first thing. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you give us an overview? Okay. Okay, you want to give us an overview of the proposal, and then we're, I'm sure we'll have. Yes. Um, we, uh, Aubrey and I, uh, we, um, we have this idea of a brief overview of who we are. Um, we're 95 Creative, a small ad agency that's going to be opening in the end of July. Um, we live in Situate. The agency is located on 123 in Norwell. Um, and uh, we uh, have been working together with the um, with, with Situate Loves Local. Uh, we worked on the commercial with you and um, and that kind of led into this drive-in idea. We thought it was kind of a great way for us to, um, to help uh, promote local businesses. Um, you know, we're still open to any ideas that can help uh, this, this uh, vehicle do that. Um, but basically, in a nutshell, what we've done is um, we've secured a uh, the 11th, a 32-foot screen that will be um, that will be set up over at the, the church parking lot. And I'm pretty sure everybody knows the Coptic Church over in um, Egypt Beach area. 
uh, we, we're going to allow uh, 60 cars. I've measured it out. I think 60 cars is safe distancing. Um, that's uh, you know, six rows of 10 cars. Uh, I'd like to create a little bit of a seating area up front for anybody that, and I don't, when I say seating area, I don't mean we're going to supply chairs or anything. Just kind of, we'll call it a mingle area, social distance mingle area, because I think maybe some of the kids will want to, uh, you know, get out and walk around a little bit. And um, basically, so the, the event starts at, we'll take cars around 8 o'clock. The lights uh, will go on at about 8.15, depending on the dust. Um, we'd like to show the this what loves local commercial first. Um, then that will lead into a small short film that we picked that's about 10 to 12 minutes. And then after that, um, it will go into the the, the, uh, the movie that we're showing. And we're only showing one. And um, those two uh, picks right now, and let's, and let's things get changed, are uh, a short uh, Wallace and Gromit because I think that plays to the children and adults because it's very adult. Um, uh, and then the, the film will be um, Samba, uh, which I, again, I think plays to a pretty good audience. This is uh, a later event, so we're really aiming for the, say, five to six year olds and up. It's not for toddlers, um, but I'll be in bed, so, you know, hopefully, uh, but you know, we, we'll, uh, I guess we'll cross that bridge when people start buying tickets. Um, we do want to aim it at the family in the church. In fact, fill it as family family driving night. Um, we're not looking for you know loads of teenagers to come in. Just uh, you know the, the 18 to 20 year old crowd. Uh, well, of course, they can come. It's just that we we want to control any of the you know uh, drinking and that kind of thing that happens. Uh, so if, if you understand what I'm saying, it's a family event. And, um, uh, and we think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we've got some food trucks that are lined up. Um, we're working on that, actually. The Oro food truck we just found out they sold. They don't have it anymore. So um, uh, Nona is in. Um, I've, uh, I've talked to uh, Christine over there, and she'd like to participate. Um, uh, we don't, so without, Oro is the only other food truck that we are aware of is in situated. If anybody has any ideas, we're open to taking anything. Otherwise, I thought maybe we could, um, you know, I, I talked to the guys uh, down at um, Harbor House Pizza. They could maybe set up a tent and flip burgers, hot dogs, and just chips, no fries, no fry ladies or anything like that. Um, that's a, a possibility we haven't really we haven't done a deep dive in that with them. I just kind of mentioned it. Um, so we're open to any suggestions in that area. Um, and the event will wrap up around 10.30. I think it's, uh, you know, it should, should be maybe two hours and 15 minutes at, at max um, and probably a little under. Uh, so that would, that would uh, the traffic would get out by 10.30 or so. And, um, and and oh yeah, I've got, as far as we, we I think I've, I've supplied the documents for the, the uh, father has given us the go, um, he's given us his blessing, no pun intended. <laughs> and um, uh, the insurance documents I sent along um, earlier. Uh, and uh, um, I think I've, I've uh, obtained one for one, two, two million, which, uh, you know, is a little bit steeper. And I secured a rain date with that as well. Um, and there would be a rain day uh, if you know if, it, if we can do it. We also the movie the movie vendor um, supplies a rain day as well. So, um, I think that's kind of it in a nutshell. Okay, thank you. Uh, we still need to do some diligence with the DBW. Um, we need their guidance. We have a couple of questions for them actually on how to block to there's two there's three points of egress in the parking lot we want to use one of them for entrance and block the other two off for the until the movie's over um and then when the movie's over take i just think there might be courses we take them away and everybody can do uh, uh exit uh, from the um, those all three slot all three uh, egresses great Okay, thank you. I know that there's questions. Mr. Vignani, did you want to go first? Um, sure, I, I just want to say thank you. I think it's a great um, event 
you know, especially during the times that everyone's going through and a great family event. And I hope a lot of people go. Um, I happened to go to one in Menden a couple of months ago with my family. It was a great time. So uh, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, Thank you. Sure. Uh, um, Thank you very much. Okay, Ms. Connelly. Connelly yeah. I'd like to suggest that if you can't come up with another food truck, that you might encourage pe people to bring their own snacks and things. Um, because if you only have one food truck, you're going to have a really long line potentially. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if you can. We're thinking about also reaching out to the movie theater and it's on our to list so that we can see if they'd be interested in helping with concessions. Movie theater. Yeah, uh, that's a good idea. Well, I, I know I, Galley has a food truck. Right. Yes, that's exactly right. Well, I've oh, okay. Did I did actually email Brian. Correct. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, he's I think been he's busy. A little bit busy, Struggle. but they do have a they do have a food truck. <laughs> I, I I do have a question. Last year at um, Heritage Days, there was an errant food truck. I know. And we couldn't tell them to go away because they had approval by the state. Remember that uh, little private incident? Property. They were on private. But it's not private this property. is private property as well, the church. So why would they need to get our Board of Health? I just don't understand the distinction between someone who has a food truck on private property, which this is, versus someone... I thought you only had to get an approval from Board of Health if it was on public property. I mean, I think the Board of Health checks them all out. <laughs> that um, wasn't the case last year. Well, they, they could check them out, but they can't tell them to leave. Mm -hmm. Well, then I don't understand. But that's Drew, so I'll have to check with Drew. But, All right. Uh, well, they have a license from the state. They must have a okay. state license. They have it from us. But that might open up some possibilities, too, right, for out-of-town out vendors yeah. or the organizers. Right. I Not not to speak for them, but I have spoken with them before, is the first intent is to um, support as the many situation. local yeah. as possible. That makes sense. So I think they're going to explore those options as much as possible. Right. And then the next phase would be to look at the hawkers that we have permission, um, that have permission to sell in our town. Yeah. That would be the next phase um, to figure it out. But I think that's a good point, Ms. Conley, that you, you want to make sure that you have an opportunity. If people are going to have availability to go to food trucks so that we don't have too many clustering. It's a very good point. The other difference is, Karen, we're permitting this event, so yeah. they need to come to us for the permit. If they want well, to have, a food, the they want days, have right? a food truck in their parking lot, could we stop them? Not necessarily the same as we had last year, but you're permitting this event, mm -hmm. and that's part of what you're permitting. Well, we permitted Heritage Days, and we still had a dispute over a truck that was not supposedly permitted by the Situate Board of mm -hmm. Health. It, you know, it, it's confusing for people. Yeah, we can look, look into that. That's a yeah. bigger question. Did you have a comment, Ms. Kern? I do. I'm curious, um, how, are you charging a fee for entry, and how is that being done? I buy a ticket. You buy a ticket beforehand? Okay. Uh, yes, we are. Oh, yeah, we're definitely charging. We're charging <laughs> And that's basically going to, uh, that is basically the bottom line cost of the event. At this point, I'm sure the probably run a little bit more than that. Uh, it'll, it'll run over three grand, but um, it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, it's going to be a little more than that. Yeah, but it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, but it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, but it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, but it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, but it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, but it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, but it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, but it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, but it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, but it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, but it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, but it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, but it's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah, uh, oh no, I'm sorry. That, yeah, yeah, that will cover everything with the insurance waiver, the um, the police detail that I'm I'm suspecting we're going to want. Uh, you know, I've got kind of everything in there. It rounds out to about thirty-two, thirty-three hundred dollars is the cost, the hard cost. Um, and uh, you know, which is fine. I it's, uh, I I wish we I wish it were more profitable. I wish we had a bigger space that we could actually, you know, make. Uh, a, you know, a nice return. Um, or is that the level of yeah, yeah. Well, well, that's okay. It's a nice initiative. It doesn't, you know. Correct. Correct. Uh, it's not well, it's limited because of the 60 car restriction. And I think 60 cars is plenty, to be quite honest. I wouldn't want to get, you know, if, if this works out well, then maybe we look at a bigger venue with 
do it uh, a few times a summer. I don't know. I, um, it's kind of just putting our feet in the water and seeing, you know, seeing how it comes out. Um, but uh, and it's, it's just controllable, I think, at that sure. at 60 cars. And so who? The plan is that we do get approval tonight, then, um, or whenever we look here, actually, that we would get the e right out within a few days so that we could have a good couple of hours, couple of weeks of people being able to purchase it. And, and will you have a, uh, a police officer with you um, collecting tickets and inspecting cars for any type of alcohol entry? As kids, kids will buy tickets. Uh, my feeling is that because we have not uh, we have not talked to the police department, we we just supplied the information, and I think on the uh, order form, I put uh, a police officer for three hours or something like that. I'm not sure. Okay. But, um, yeah, I mean, I definitely you know I'd like to have uh, some help there in the front as the cars are coming in, just to, you know. Uh, to, so that the officers can do what they do, and that's kind of keep a watch alive. I really think it's, we're going to label this as very much a family, as I said earlier, a family event. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but yeah, we're, we're we definitely feel like we need that officer in here. Well, it's a great idea. So I wish yeah. you all the luck. I, I'm curious. I'm just going to ask uh, Mr. Vignani a question. How much did you have to pay? Thirty. Okay. Um, Mr. Goodrich, did you have? Yeah, comment? I, I guess I was just curious how uh, how many cars the um, the lot actually holds without any restrictions. No, I'm just thinking of like space to get around. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I went, I've been there twice, and uh, I have not gotten. It. I, I've measured it out. Um, I know it looks to me it would be well over probably a uh, you know. 120 cars, I mean, almost double uh, 60. Um, but, you know, that's, uh, I didn't, it's not mathematical how I did it, um, but I did, uh, I did take measurements from a common parking lot, and that's what I kind of put into this. That's how I derived the, uh, the um, 60 cars, the six rows of 10. It's not, there, there are no lines in the parking lot, it's really washed out. So, um, I mean, there's plenty of lines, but it's so, uh, we're all, you know, cracked. <laughs> so, there's no marking. And, um, but it I says 110 feet. And, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I know that 60 cars, I know 60 cars would be good. But, right. uh, it's um, before, you know, if we get approval, I will go back and, and uh, we'll actually take a few cars. I'll take three or four cars and we'll, we'll make sure that we're spaced out how we want to do it. And, Figure out. So if we have to tell her, if we have to tell her to say 55 cars or something like that, we'll And we don't have a, there is, you know, one thing, I think somebody mentioned earlier, the Board of Health had a, a guideline for parking as drivers. Mm -hmm. Is that? Yeah. yeah, so we were provided. I did, I did my own social distancing. I kind of like, you know, I, I winged it. But if you have something that you can actually go by, that would be big help. Yeah, so we can send you um, the sector-specific workplace standards, which is on the mass stock gov re uh, reopening. They have sector for everything. Okay. Um, they, what they yeah, under, yeah, we'll send it, and it just says capacity must be reduced to allow for adequate distancing between cars. It doesn't mandate a specific amount, but we'll send that to you um, so that you can make sure. Are, are, uh, did you have more questions, Mr. Goodrich, before I go on? Um, are, so are you going to be taping taping the parking lot or how will people know where to park to make sure that they're not yes we're gonna uh, it's a great question um, we are gonna we're gonna we're gonna tape, tape it out or chalk it out we might chalk it out and um, we're going to have volunteers basically my entire family I've got five <laughs> children they're all adults and uh, we're gonna have volunteers so there'll be somebody at each aisle with a flashlight um, and you know we'll be pretty uh, I think it's really only six aisles so it shouldn't be too bad but we will have um, we will have a pretty good volunteer staff there uh, with you know adults with flashlights and helping out guiding the traffic but we will have it chalked out as well for sure Miss Conley you had another okay, question we were, you know uh, if you don't mind I'm just gonna sideline here. 
one of the things we're trying to do is incorporate local businesses, and it's kind of, um, it's been a little bit more difficult than we thought as how to integrate it. One of the things we thought is each aisle would have, like, um, you know, each parking space could actually have the name of a business in situ, like, you know, like uh, um, the gals is, is where you're parking. And, and we were thinking that we we'd actually hand that out at the entrance. As people come in, we give them a parking spot, say they're in aisle six, third, third one, and, and that's, we're not asking for money for sponsorship, but we can just use their name. It's a good idea. Um, Encourage some social media usage, tagging, like I can imagine mm -hmm. families, um, Saying, oh, we're in the galley parking spot today. I'm just going to do it local, local, driving sort of thing. We're just really trying to pull that, you know, everything we can to kind of make this fun and really incorporate some business aspects of it. Good. That's important. Ms. Conley, you had another question? Well, a couple of things. Um, it says for the vehicles, customers must remain in their vehicles at all times, except when purchasing concessions or using the restroom. So I think the idea of having that. Seating area. Gathering area up front is probably against these rules as I read them. Mm -hmm. okay. the only uh, thing, yeah, well, it, it's, it, wouldn't it, have been, it wouldn't have been a big area anyway, um, but that is very good to know. Well, it just matter. might as well not bother. <laughs> yeah. Um, my question yeah. is that the, the um, they requested, first of all, DPW, trash barrels, etc. We've been through this and through this and through this over the years with various people running events. The cost of the trash collection, the cost of the barrels, renting the barrels, the cost of details, permitting fees, waiving fees. So I just want to be sure that whatever we do, as much as I understand that this is being done as a way to help us all with COVID related problems, that we not make special rules for <laughs> A group that admittedly is at hoping to break even, they'd like to make money, but right. we've got the same problem with Heritage Days and Fall for North Situate, so I just want to be sure we're fair. I think they're only asking for the special event permit to be waived and not the costs to DPW and the, obviously the detail that are incorporated. So you have, you have included in your budget the cost of DPW, getting the horses out there, getting the manpower, the trash barrels, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. Thank uh, you. And we still, and like I said, I think um, I actually, I, I, the proposal for the um, movie itself, just to cut, break it down just a little bit, is about, with one movie, it's going to be about 1650, 1650. And then the additional, the, the insurance waivers, uh, close to 300 because I'm getting the rain day. Um, and then uh, I'm, I'm figuring the police detail. And then there's probably, a, I've got about $500 in there left um, for, you know, things like port potty, uh, DP, DPW. And then after that, you know, it's going to be out of pocket. And, um, and I, I, we shouldn't fall too far out of that. Um, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, so we're good. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. The last thing that I just want to mention, there was a letter from um, an abutter. Um, I know that these guys went door to door with a letter, and one woman who lives right there was concerned that um, she just wanted more information. Is this a one-time thing? How is the sound going to be? Um, if you could just very quickly just explain how people hear this. It's not broadcast all over the neighborhood. How do people hear the movie? Yeah, that's, I'm, you know, that's a great point. Sorry I didn't mention that earlier. Um, one of the beauties of this particular vendor is that they have an app. So as the people come into the parking lot, they download the app and it goes on to their FM radio. So all, all, there are no big speakers outside or anything. Everything's contained within the cars, which in itself does create noise, as we know. Um, but it's not this booming, you know, theatrical um, that you would hear from a concert or something like that. Um, but yeah, that is a, that is an important element. Okay. Great. Well, yeah, she was comforted with the information and um, just um, when you meet with the police, just remind them that um, they should be watching the traffic because it might be a curiosity as people come by. Um, 
I if the board has no other questions, we'll open it up to Q and A. Q&A um, If somebody would like to comment on this, you press, what is it, star six? Star six. Star six. Give your name and. Are there anyone in the queue? There is none. <coughs> Seeing none, then I will. Um, would motion. somebody like to make a motion? I'll take a, a, I'll take a motion. Mr. Goodrich. <laughs> Move that the Board of Selectmen approve a special event permit to Aubrey Schwartz, 95 Creative and Situate Loves Local, for drive-in movie on July 11th, 2020, from 6.30 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Moved by Mr. Goodrich. Second. Second by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Here you're seeing none. Five zero in favor. Thank you, Schwartzes. Well, we have a special event for yeah, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's another. Uh, that was a special. That was a separate one. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on a second. He doesn't have to be here. He doesn't have to be. I thought it's the same one. No. That one approved, and now we need to do uh, to waive the special event. Oh, thank you, Ms. Curran. Like yes. Do I have a motion on the special event? Fee. Wait, fee. Uh, I move to approve a special event. To waive. I move to approve the waiver of a special event permit fee to Aubrey Schwartz and 95 Creative and Citrate Loves Local for the drive-in movie on July 11th, 2020 from 6.30 to 11.30. Moved by Ms. Kern. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Vignani, is there any further conversation? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Five zero in support nope. of. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. One opposed. I. I don't think we should do it. So. Okay. So noted. I amend four to one. Um, the motion passes. Did you want to comment further? I didn't really. Yeah, I don't think it's fair that we're uh, granting a waiver when we don't waive all the other things that people do in town. So we do in certain circumstances. Yeah. We have in the past. Well, I, I think it's sort of capricious that we sometimes we we waive it, sometimes we don't. That's just my opinion. Okay. All right. Anyone else like to comment further? Okay. The nope. motion passes four one, and we'll move on to a discussion and vote on a new Hawker Peddler's license for JB Doggy Delights ice cream truck. Is uh, Ms. Brady online? She's not. All right. Um, yeah, pardon me? So the proposal is in our packets, and you can all see that this is like any other truck that drives around, but this particular vendor services dogs and is asked for permission to park at the Situate Dog Park on certain days, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday in the late afternoon. Um, so we'd have to abide by the, there's a 15 minute rule, our bylaws, right. so we. To move on. Yeah, you can't just park yeah. there. Um, well, why don't we discuss it? Would you like to oh. comment on this, Mr. Vignani? No, I just want to make sure whoever it was was aware of the rule of the bylaw for um, standing for, yeah. um, for the mobile food. Do you have any insight on that, Michelle? I believe she's only looking to go to one location in Citrus, which would be the dock market. Right, not which I need to know because don't we allow the coffee gentleman at Situate um, Light the Lighthouse? He stays there for yeah. I thought coffee. it was an ice cream truck that went around, so it's well, the dog ice cream. yeah. <laughs> you don't want to eat this. No people. Food. No. No people. Food. Uh, not the JB and JB's no. doggy ice cream. Truck. So. <laughs> okay. So that's his, uh, there's nothing that I have saw in the application that limits the time that they stay there. No, if they're um, just if they're just going to go there. It just says we will park in the late afternoon. So uh, ask for more specific timing if that would. Yeah, or we probably could probably make sense because then people will know she's there if she's there consistently. Right. Can we um, can we table the the time and discuss the concept? Uh, just a little bit. I did have some questions on that. Do anyone want to talk about something outside of the how long they would be there and the timing? 
about the actual concept. No, Karen? Yeah, I just want to clarify for the record that this is just dog treats, right? Just dog treats. Doggy no, Delight no ice cream truck. Food. No people. Okay. <laughs> uh, my concern, yes, Ms. Karen. Does the Board of Health regulate this type of. Um, <laughs> Good question. Well, I, I don't yeah. know. Like, who, who regulates whether or not the doggy treats are I have no certified? Idea. You know what I mean? And safe. Yeah, we did check with Board of Health, and this is not a Board of Health um, area because it's not people food. So who has authority over that? Do we have a, uh, we've got to have some sort of authority that regulates the safety, you know, food safety for pets. And I'm not saying that she's not, but I think it's in our best interest to understand that what she's making and selling. Hmm. Right. Yes. Sorry. She, in the backup, there's a, spe a special state license hawk hawker peddler from 2010. That's interesting. Yeah, I think we need to know some more. We don't know if she, it sounds like she's done this before. Yeah. Um, if the I think Drew, we should maybe have Drew comment on it. Yeah, I I think Michelle, it might be best if we asked her put this on the next agenda, sure. and have some more information about this. My concern, my only concern, other than the ones you've mentioned, was that parking lot is very tight and very popular, and um, I'd like to know how much space this truck will take up and how many spaces will be lost parking. That's valid. So, will the, does the board agree that we should table this and get a little more information? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think it'd be a good idea for her, because it's kind of a new concept. We really would like to talk to her. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if she can. To call, so. Yeah. So, I think she should come on before we pass it, so we can ask. I agree. Our questions agree. to her. Yeah. All right. There is no one waiting there, Nancy. One Oh, maybe she's oh, maybe. called in that way. Yes, please open up to that. She's probably in there desperately joining it in. <laughs> um, if you would like to Q &A session has started. please participate by hitting star six. If you can hear me. Hi, is someone there? They went away? Um, the person's still there, but they may not want to comment on this. I oh, about this issue. Okay. All right, then um, we will table that to the next meeting, invite her to attend, and um, alert her to the, to the questions we have so she's prepared. Great. <coughs> um, then we'll move on to the next, which is a discussion vote about the, uh, to ratify uh, restaurant extension of premises for TKO Malley's and Rivas. Um, as the board knows, we gave Jim authority to um, go forth and help um, businesses so Jimmy want to tell us about this yeah so the two that came in since you met the first one is Reva um, it's not a great picture as to what they're doing but I went down there today to make sure they have tables right out in front with uh, planters and rope delineating the space there is plenty of room for people to get by so the handicap accessibility is still maintained going by this so that was fine on the sidewalk yeah mm -hmm. right out in front really? yeah. so is it, are the tables right up against the building yeah. Two seats to each table. So, uh, the second one was um, TK O'Malley's. They've extended seating down that deck behind uh, TK's out onto the oh. going down to the pier. That cool. does not show up on their current license. So we just called and said, "Hey, you want to be safe? You want to be covered? Just send it in." And so I approved that um, for that area. And told them, if you want that all the time, you got to come back and change your license. Any questions from the board? Uh, do they have a rope or any delineation at the end of that ramp? Locked. It is yes. blocked. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, no questions, uh, Mr. Just, Manetti? just one. I, I'm probably stating the obvious. So we do not have to close any more of Front Street because of Reva's. Well, Reva is still considering whether they want to extend seating into the street. But for this right now, right now, done. this is all they've gotten to me. Um, I've asked for the plan for Front Street. I haven't seen it. Can we open it up for Q&A? Q&A session has started. If you would like to comment on either Reva or TK's extension of premises per, uh, ratification, please hit star six. No one's waiting. We'll close Q&A. 
Do I have a motion on this? Today's session is over. I move that the Board of Select Board of Select sorry, Board of Selectmen ratify the temporary licenses issued by the town administrator to the following restaurants to serve liquor under a temporary extension of premises and outdoor seating licenses in accordance with the COVID-19 order number 35 and consistent with the process of approving such requests established by the Board of Selectmen for TK O'Malley's and Reba. Uh, motion from Ms. Curran. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Connolly. And any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, aye. 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 All opposed? All right, it's 5-0 in support of the ratifying those extensions. Thank you, Jim. We'll move on to discussion vote of 62 Glades parking license. Uh, Mr. Bedro, would you like to update us on that? So I put a picture, I got a picture of for the meeting today, 62 Glades Road is the first house as you come over Gannett along the seawall. To the right where you see that car parked, um, that is actually town property. Hmm. So there is no parking that goes with this particular house. In 1977, the town meeting voted to give the house a five-year lease on those parking spaces for one dollar per year. It was never renewed. Uh, the current owner and her real estate agent have asked that the board convey a license to them for the use of those parking lots for a two to three year period. And they would seek that the town meeting give them a longer lease to that property in the interim. We have the authority to give them how long? You have the authority to give them a license, nothing over three years without town meeting approval. So they never came back. Mm -hmm. 77, uh, the town meeting vote is in your, your backup, yeah. and that's the last we have of it uh, for any action being taken by the town in an official capacity. Anyone from the board like to comment? Oh, Miss. I do believe we may have the homeowner or the realtor on the phone. Oh. Evelyn? I am on the phone and I'm having difficulty hearing a lot, but I'm getting the gist of most of everything. Okay, thank you for, I didn't realize you were in um, Thank you for being here. Uh, the town administrator just gave the board the background on your request. Um, would you like to add something to why uh, the, the board should uh, look favorably on this application? Can you cut, is this your home? Well, I certainly thank you for putting me on your meeting agenda and talking about it. I think it's something that we appreciate that. We bought the house a couple of years ago when we bought it um, on the lease, on the sales agreement. So we had a 99 year lease on that parking area. And I, I think it'll, before we close, I think go to the town and ask a variety of people, and I don't ask me who because I didn't get it in writing. And they said, don't worry about it. I talked to various permitting people at town hall. So, um, we bought the property and we, you know, done a lot of cleanup on it. And um, in the meantime, my husband has come down with rapidly progressive dementia, and I need to sell the house. And the problem with selling the house is parking. And um, uh, I, I just, I would love to, to be able to put a three-year lease with the property when I sell it. And I'd like to be able to renew that or the future owner renew that uh, as necessary. Um, again, I realized I'm doing research afterwards that it was only a five year lease back in 77. Again, um, clearly did not do enough due diligence when we bought the property. We love the property, I just can't keep it any longer. Thank you for that. Uh, appreciate you coming forward, trying to do the right thing. When uh, when conservation saw this on the agenda, there is an outstanding order of conditions on the property. Uh, out front, they need to do some plantings from when they put in a septic system. So they wanted the board to be aware of that and make sure that if the board would like to issue the license, that they make it a condition that the order of conditions is met. Um, maybe you can call me directly about that. I, I just. It's really garbled, something about um, 
conservation commission or something. Yeah, you, you have some, uh, perhaps. you have some uh, outstanding conditions from when you did the septic system. Some plantings and things like that that the Conservation Commission has required. Um, and I've, I've tried to um, fix that and I've tried to comply. It's been very difficult in that it's been very contentious. Uh, and I would love to put some planning in there. What, what was requested I do was to put sod in between the house and the, the sidewalk which I will do, but when you read the um, rules on when I put the septic in, they said you can't put in um, irrigation, um, any kind of irrigation system. Well, if I don't have an irrigation system, I can't make the sod lift because I'm not there every week to water it. Um, so I put in this lovely pea gravel, which has stayed for almost three years now. It's never, it never doesn't move. So your con con conservation lady, Amy, said, well, there's no roots, it won't stay, and it's, it, it's been staying there. I'd love to put some planters in, and she, she was not happy with that. I would, you know, I would love to make it a little more fluffy around the house, but again, I can't... I'll, I'll be in touch with you directly. I'll, I'll be in touch with you directly, and we can right. talk about that. Let's work something out that works okay. in that area. Okay. Yeah, so that was that was our town administrator, and he will he'll he'll get in touch with you directly to see if there's something that would be a little more uh, practical for your application that'll meet the uh, conservation. Yeah, I'd love to do something. I'd love to have you get a hold of me. And, yeah, I'm sorry, the audio on my end is just terrible, so oh, I'm having okay. I'm getting about every third word. So I'm guessing it what you're trying to ask me. All right. Um, does the board? Just a quick yep. question, Mr. Vignani. I, I I didn't catch your name, but. Um, is this property a property that you live in year-round, or is it a rental property? Um, it was a property we bought to live in in the summers, and to rent it when we were not there during the summer hour, uh, summer time. Um, any other questions from the board? I'm fine. I don't. I don't have a problem. No. Continue with the lease. No. Um, Jim, anything to add? No, I'll just have to have the engineering department go out there and provide me with a sketch of what it is. Okay. I, um, yep. Well, I guess I'd like to go. I, so I think we have to come up with a long-term plan for you to own that property because um, I don't think a, a series of leases is the right way to do it. Um, it's town property, and I think you should have to purchase it from the town. If that's – I mean, clearly you need it because you don't have any land for parking. Um I don't know what the original buyers were doing, you know, probably putting a too big of a house on that property and then they should have, but I don't think it's right that you get to use town land um, for free. So I think that there should be some sort of longer term plan where you come up and you purchase whatever the square footage of that is and just we can make this, this go away. Un I, I, again, I, I, I'm selling the property. Would like to get parking. I'd love to do a lease of three, five, twenty-five years. I mean, uh, I'm not set on on the years of the lease. Um, I, I I can't hold the property anymore. My, my life has right. And I, I sympathize for that. I think, yeah. I think the I think the the solution to this is you buy that land, not lease the land, um, because it's. It's never going to be. You're never going to not need it. Um, okay. So, you know, maybe we put a band-aid on it now for a couple of years, but I think either you or the new owners have to come up, and we should probably, unfortunately, to sell it, you've got to put it. Um, it's got to be an open bidding process. Um, so. And it needs to go to town meeting before that. Right. Yeah. So. I just don't like the idea of leasing town land. I mean, there's not enough parking down there anyways for people to go to the beach. Um, but clearly you need it for that property to be accessible. So um, that those are that's my two cents. Uh, any other questions from the board? Yeah, so I've lived in this neighborhood for a good long time, and it's always been sort of 
this gravelly area that nobody uses. So it's just been grandfathered in. But I agree with um, Mr. Vignani that, uh, um, yeah, this is a Band-Aid to accommodate them. And I think she should be commended that, you know, uh, it's the right thing to do is to come in and get it fixed before she tries to sell it and then and not just sort of promise what she was promised. Um, but I think that somehow I don't think we can mandate it in a, a lease, but we could probably say to not be extended or something um, just to motivate yeah. the next person. Again, you can't give a lease. You can only give a license. A license. A lease has to go to town meeting also. So you can have a license agreement for them to use the property for a three-year period or less. Okay. Hmm. Ms. Connolly? I would like to suggest that we do a one-year lease with so she can sell it, but with an understanding in writing that it will be up to the next owner to negotiate with the town as to purchasing the property and what the cost would be and that they're going to have to go to town meeting, et cetera. I just don't think we should be giving even a three-year lease. I think that just encourages yeah. more of the same, which is procrastination and, oh, it's all fine. Right. Um, I would say I would amend that to say at least two years just because the process will take a while. And if somebody buys it and then by the time they get there, but I wouldn't disagree. Mr. Goodrich, did you want to add something? No, I was just going to say it seems like the, the owner's been doing this in two faith, and I was going to say it's going to take a while, at least two years, for a, a license, and not, not the lease. I mean, this has been hap happening longer than I have been, than I was a born. <laughs> Um, and hasn't been resolved, and it seems that the town wasn't itching to get in there, and this was a major issue. Um, so so I, I think <laughs> another another two years, I don't think, um, for the ability for her to doing the right thing to sell the property, get the new owners, and not be too onerous, I think would be the um, Ms. Connolly? I would also like to address the conservation issue, Jim, when you yeah. talk to her, because yeah. I don't think this board wants people to be not listening to what another board says they're supposed to do, no matter whether you think right. it's doable or not. If it's a condition, it's a condition. And if so, I we, we have enough people flouting rules around here about conservation, so I would encourage point, people to point do what they said they would do. Uh, does anyone else have a comment from the board? All right. Uh, we're going to open it up to question and answer to the public. If someone would like to comment on the um, Q&A session has started. 62 Glades Road hit pound six. No one's waiting. We will close, close, uh, uh, Q question and answer. session is over. Um, Want a motion? I would appreciate a motion. <laughs> I'll try and take our conversation and turn it into one. So I move that we, um, is there what's the person's name? I move that we approve a two-year license uh, for the said property at. Um, well, we didn't talk about terms of the license, the fees associated with it. It's a. It was a dollar a year before. It's a dollar a year before. Yep. Is everyone fine with it being a dollar a year? Or should it be? Are there any costs associated to the town? For this property, time for the engineers just to go out and market for me. But that's okay. the regular. Let's give them two years to wrap up the issue. Yeah, I'd like to suggest that the cost of a beach sticker. <laughs> what is a beach sticker? These well, yeah. it is essentially a beach yeah. sticker. I honestly think that this this woman would like to sell her home, yep. and it, it doesn't okay. behoove us to make it more difficult. Um, so I would support you know two year license for the same rate and I don't know if we can condition this with making sure that something I think we condition. Um, like how they do you, how you condition plan. the buyers to come in and, and oh, no. you can't do that um, yeah. don't well, we do it but we can make it non-renewable right. well, yeah. well the board will be able to decide that when it comes that up time. for renewal it won't be automatically renewal okay. don't um, forget <laughs> All right, I'll try the motion again. So I move that we um, uh, give a two-year license to the current owner of the property for the fee of a dollar a year um, with the conditions to adhere to the conservation's um, conditions in front of the house 
as well as coming up with a plan, a purchase plan uh, before the end of the uh, lease. Purchase plan? You mean put it under purchase and sale? Well, they've got to come to us with, uh, um, I guess they really don't. We have to decide to. Right, she sells it tomorrow. Yeah. So well, I, what, what I just say, with the intention of us um, wanting to sell the property at the end of the lease. Does that work for you, Mr. Bedreau? Yep. Members of the board? All right. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I second. What? I seconded oh, it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> motion by Mr. Vignani, second by Ms. Carr. I know. Sorry. <laughs> Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Yes. yes. Oh, well, yes. Can somebody call me um, about what they want me to do? I, mm -hmm. I never could figure out what I was supposed to do. Yep. Yep, Mr. Bedreau will call you. Right. Or conservation. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Again, I, I want to be a good neighbor. I want to do what, what is proper, but again, it never really got around to what I was supposed to do. Okay. All right. Well, we look forward to resolving that. Do I have all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Is that an opposition or uh, a question? No. I'm in favor. In favor. <laughs> All right. We have a 5 0 um, approval <coughs> of the motion. Thank you, ma'am. Good luck. Thank you so much. And I'll, I'll talk to Mr. Bodrew as soon as he calls me. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Um, all right. We will now move on to a discussion review of. <laughs> we'll have a musical interlude now. <laughs> and then we will move on to a discussion review of the annual town meeting, our assignment of articles. And, and uh, Mr. Goodrich, before, before you joined the board, we had already assigned articles. Oh, wait a minute. Do we have the previous list? Yeah. I'm not touching it. I'm just going to confirm it. Session is over. <laughs> I forget. I forget quite really Anyone care to dance? No one else is on. No one is on right now. I'm not us, touching so it. I'm just. I don't know. Just. I. I. Let's have a little background music for the rest of the evening. It's like in a bad radio show. <laughs> um, so. The, the board had met earlier um, before the election to divide up the articles, but because of the many delays to when we could hit meet town meeting, we have changed many things about the what's going to happen, um, but we are now scheduled to meet this Saturday. Um, and um, we, we can go through all of the articles and reassign, or we can start with assuming that what you had before you had, and then talk about reassigning some things for Mr. Goodrich to participate. Uh, any comments from the board? Do, they Do you have the list of what we had I, before? I have my scribbles. Do you happen to have the old one, Michelle? Or I, 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 think I, I think I have it pretty good. Yes, he usually does. Do you have a yeah. next? So um, if you have the, the clean list, the special town meeting originally, um, oh, you know what, before we do that, let me just make a, one comment. Normally in the course of these things, sorry, Michelle. <laughs> Normally in the co course of town meeting, the sitting chair has served for the prior year, and then it's their roundup of the year, and then there's an election, and then we have town meeting. Town meeting, then the election. Right, I'm sorry, town meeting, then the election, and the board changes over. Because of the emer public emergency, we're in an unusual situation where we had the election, we reorged. I'm now the chair, but Mr. Vignani is the past chair, and it was sort of his year. So I would like to submit to the board that Mr. Vignani should take the lead on things a chair would normally do in the course of events because it was his leadership for the year. And that. Um, and then, and, and then there are certain things that the board chair typically will take as articles. 
Does anyone have an objection to that besides Mr. Vignani? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with it. You, you'll get it next year. Yep, and then, then it will make sense because I'm just at the start of my tenure. So as much as I love the microphone, I, will, uh, I think it makes more sense. Thank you very much. Okay. So in that case, special town meeting, the four articles under that are typically done by the chair. So Tony will continue with those. Do you want me to just Thank run you. through these? And if you have an objection or want to change, just let me know. You can hold. <laughs> um, what else is different is we have um, two consent agendas now instead of one. It was just consent agenda for routine articles. Now we have that plus a consent agenda for those articles which we are going to suggest be postponed until we have less restrictive gathering rules. Um, so, under the annual town meeting, articles one and two, which are part of the consent agenda, were assigned to Tony. Would you like to keep those? Yeah, I'll keep. All right, yeah. Ms. Curran had article three, which was the capital improvement plan. Okay. Um, the budget is typically the chair, is that correct? Yeah. All right, so Tony will do article four. This is hard to read. Okay. Um, yeah, this uh, one's easier, though. Uh, yeah. 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 Articles five and six, uh, well, the next several are enterprise funds. Mr. Vignani has requested that he take article six. Yeah. You want to take all of them? No, just golf course. Yeah, just the golf course. Um, and the other enterprise funds were going to be Mr. Harris. Is that something Mr. Goodwich would be willing to take on? Sure. Uh, so, yeah, waterways. Yeah, so you would have five waterways, seven wastewater, eight transfer, nine water enterprise, and ten stabilization no. is also in there. No, ten is Karen. Correct. Ten is Karen. Oh, yeah. Just through oh, nine. Oh, I'm sorry. I had the wrong line there. Okay. So through nine. Now, are those all consent agendas? They are. All right. So those are... Yeah. Those are all consent. Um, the app, the assignment is in the event somebody holds them and wants to debate. We'll have somebody prepared to, to present on that. Uh, number 10 was the stabilization, um, and that was Ms. Connolly. You had 10, which is stabilization, 11, revolving fund, 12, community preservation, and 13, cons community preservation reconciliations which are all on the consent agenda. That's great. You want to continue with those? Yep. Okay. Um, 14, 15, and 14 and 15 were to, um, also on the consent agenda, and they were um, amend room occupancy excise tax, and 15 is um, local option acceptance of this SPED reserve fund. I had those prior. I'm happy to keep those. 16 has now been moved to the uh, consent agenda to postpone. That is the sale of the Council on Aging and Mine at Fire Stations. I had that. No. Mara, you had I that. I had that. Yep. Mara had that. Would you like to retain that? Sure. And the next is the cell tower leases. You'll have that as well. Um, 18 and 19... 18, 19, 21, we had um, uh, Mass General Law, Chapter 91, Liability. That's a consent agenda. That was Ms. Curran. Let's keep that. Um, number, number 19 is the Municipal Agreement, Sewer District. Is that still on? It's still on the war, but that's postponed. It's going to be. It's on the postponed agenda. Yep. Okay. Um, Mara, would you want to keep that just in case somebody wants to talk about it? Sure. Okay. Uh, 20 is a zoning bylaw amendment that is in the postponement um, consent agenda now. Uh, would Mr. Goodrich like to take that on in case someone wants to discuss it? Yes, um, the good. next is the zoning bylaw. Can I ask a question? Sure. On the postpone consent agenda, are we not going to do those? We're going to IP them, right? That's one vote, yes. IP them for one vote. So all, all those, the moderator is going to have a, a consent agenda to postpone. He's going to go 13, 14, 15, hold. That comes out. But can some, someone can hold it and pull it out, yeah. Yeah. Yep, someone can hold it and pull it. Then at the but end. But we're going to IP it regardless. 
Everything will be postponed on the consent agenda, yes. Well, if somebody holds it, we will Someone discuss. holds something. You gotta vote it. Let me let me ask again. Okay. So there's <laughs> consent where everybody votes to approve, right? And then there's postpone where it doesn't get approved. Correct. It gets it gets postponed. So you don't really have to prepare for one that we're gonna IP anyways. Well, if someone wants to debate it and wants to take it off the postpone agenda, then you would have to be prepared to debate it. Yeah. Okay, but we are going to postpone it. We're not gonna try and get it passed. We're, we're not going to vote to IP it. We're going to vote to postpone it to the next town meeting. That's IPing it. Postponing. No. Well, indefinitely. Well, yeah. Right? Yeah. I, it's postponing it. You, whether you put it on the next town meeting is up to you. Is up to us. That's true. But I don't. I still don't think we're all on the same to. page here. Right. So if an article is in the within the postponed group, yeah. Somebody holds it, pulls it out. Number eighteen. We're now discussing. Article 18, correct? Can Article 18 pass at that time, or is it just for discussion purposes only? No, it can pass. It comes out okay, to be regularly I discussed. Didn't, now, I think everybody was clear on that. Right. So I, I hold it. I get it. And then we come back to Article 18, and they're like, all right, well, I'll take a motion, and I'm just sitting there like a dummy because I don't know what to do. Someone could sit up and say, I move to postpone Article 18. And postpone it individually. Now you have a debate on it, you discuss it, but that's right. So anything on here, regardless of what we do to postpone it, can get voted and passed. Mm -hmm. Someone can pull it off and it can pass. That's correct. Even though we say we want to indefinitely postpone this. And, and the same as someone could pull something off the consent agenda and vote to kill it. Right. So yes. well, I get consent because we're just trying to go through that quickly. Right. But postpone, I didn't. I realize. We don't. We technically you don't want it on the agenda because we don't want to discuss it because we don't want to vote it. Yeah, I guess if we're not if ready we had had the it. ability to remove it from the warrant and print a new condensed warrant with only those articles we felt were important, yeah, those things in the postponed article we probably wouldn't have put on the on the warrant. But, but they're there. We can't take them off at this point. And because they're there, they can be voted and approved. Because they're there, people have the right to vote on them if they wish. That's correct. And is is Jim Toomey or would Tony be? the individual to give that instruction at the lead of the meeting so folks know the Jim, reason why we're postponing Jim is because Toomey it's do that. 82 degrees out we're sitting outside and we don't have you know full representation right it's not right. because the wait, issue wait. isn't important to us any longer right it's an issue that can wait to a subsequent time right yes. so I think it'll be okay. important for that to be a lead discussion right. and I'm sure Tony will make those that clear in his remarks so that well. was that 20 was that mr goodrich i lost so yeah we were at uh yes uh, 20 okay. yeah so 20 is mr goodrich for signs um i believe i had the 21 yep 22 23 those three were zoning issues and bylaw issues so they are on the consent agenda i believe they're on the um postpone agenda nope they're, they're all on the postponement they're, all consent. they're on consent yeah. Yeah, um, so, so I'll keep those. 24, um, I had that as well. That was another bylaw section that's on the postponed. Um, it's on consent. It's on consent. It's on the consent, sorry. 22, 23, and 24 are not zoning, the regular bylaw articles. Regular bylaws. Articles. Like the dog thing. And the dog thing, the time of town meeting that comes up every five or six years when it's on Memorial Day weekend. and. Right, and then and setting the up all funds. the revolving funds. Yeah. Okay. The rest of the articles are all citizen petitions. Number 25 has been withdrawn, uh, but Sean had that. Um, in case that comes up, Mr. Goodrich, would you take that? Yes. Yes. Um, 26 I had, which is the, it's, it's redundant to the, um, the room occupancy the tax. and. Yeah. 27 is the um, South Shore Community Action Council. Tony had that. Um, do you want to continue with that? Or I can. We? If or somebody has yeah. mostly consent ones, they can do that one. I'll take it. You want to do that one? Okay, so Karen, K2 will take that. And the last is uh, Medicaid for All. All of these are on the um, postponed consent agenda, so they may not come up, but should they? Karen Conley was on that. You want to continue with that? Okay. All right, everybody clear? And a little work to do between now and Saturday? So just to be clear, if <laughs> the two consent 
articles pass yes without any question the postponed one and the consent one we're only going to do the special town meeting the capital plan the budget and cpc correct, correct. special town meeting three four and twelve so that's the that's the shortest that the meeting can be yes mm -hmm. and special will go quick so three four and 12 and then if all of the consent ones I guess there's quite a few of those and then those will be either um, held and discussed or not and then the postponements will probably just be postponed I've never IP'd something and somebody wanted to discuss it so that would be a long shot. Yeah, know. Okay. Crazier things happen. True. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So just just to reiterate for the public, the uh, they'll they'll we'll cover the town meeting, but the entire purpose of postponing um, a good chunk of this is that it is unlikely that we will have a full attendance at this town meeting because of all of the parameters that are all of the um, precautions that are going to be taken. So rather than have a debate, um, an imperfect debate. We'd rather wait until the town can gather. So that's the purpose of that. We hope to see as many of you as possible on Saturday at 9 a.m. Um, and we will get through with the town business so that we can operate our, operate our government. Um, I believe that is, oh, now we have all the fun stuff. Okay. The next thing on our agenda is for interdepartmental budget transfers. Nancy Holt will now put on her financial director hat. <laughs> oh, shit. So, um, as I told you last meeting, that we would have no more transfers, I hoped, and then the day afterwards, we had problems. Uh, it's never a good idea to send one of the fire engines down to the shop for a little bit of a paint job because bad things happen, and it did to this poor little fire engine, engine one. They took the diamond plates off and found corrosion, because when you take stuff off, you find stuff underneath. Uh, so the $2,600 repair became the $6,600 repair. And then while they had it taken apart, they looked at other things and found another $7,000 worth of repairs that are um, needed on the engine, including the air conditioning, which um, pursuant to the chief is required under mass law to have the engine have the air conditioning, which it does not have. So what was a $2,600 paint job turned into a $15,000 repair bill in June, which they cannot cover. So what I have before you is a request to transfer $15,000 to the fire department repair and maintenance property and equipment line from the fire department regular salaries line. Um, the fire department is going to have a surplus in their salary line this year. Um, a lot of their vacations aren't being taken right now because of the pandemic, so they are turning back funds. So it'll be handled within the department, just going from payroll to expense. Well, that'll teach us to take care of our trucks. <laughs> any First comments from? For repair in June. Um, great, thank you, Nancy. Anybody have any questions about this proposal? No, uh, but it's staying within the department. It is within the department, and it is necessary. Are there any? Um, is there anyone waiting to have for comment? You have two people that are. Um, on the line but they're for the next agenda item and they can both speak if they want to right now okay oh okay um then seeing no public comment i'll take a motion <coughs> move to transfer from the available fy 2020 general fund budget line of fire department regular salaries the sum of fifteen thousand dollars the fire department repair and maintenance property slash equipment account in the amount of fifteen thousand dollars <coughs> to mgl chapter 44b section 33 Motion by Ms. Connolly. Do I have second. a second? Second by Mr. Vignani. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Now we will go on to all business, which is we postponed the conversation about the recreational field and permit rules and regs. Mr. Vice Chair, is that because we ran out of time? I've forgotten the reason. I think, we're going to change um, the I think they... They postponed it. They postponed it. I think you guys want a little more time to read it. And okay. Oh, that's right. They gave us the yeah. document and we reviewed it. We wanted it, to yes. have the time to absorb it. Great. Um, thank you. So we have, I believe, Maura Glancy, our record director, and Jennifer McClellan, who is the chair. Is that correct? Correct. Are you there? Great. 
Turn up the volume. Yeah, yeah. hold on. We got to turn turn up the volume a little. That's it. Okay. Um, as the board may recall, um, because we have a new athletic field, I'm going to try to summarize. And Mark, correct me if I'm wrong. We have a new athletic field, new facilities, um, which required a review of some of the um, permitting and fees associated with it. Um, to ensure that um, the fields were appropriately uh, used by different groups at the right price point. And so we have a document that recommends certain changes to the existing field permit application and fees. Is that a fair summary, Mara? Sure is. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you want to add anything to the discussion from last time Mara? Um, just two points that you had um, supported after to address from the last time last time we came in front of you uh, one of the things that they wanted added was under the um, repercussions that the mm -hmm. fines will be able to hold the discretion of the Central uh, Recreation Commission and that has been added. And then um, we added, there was some confusion on the light payments of, that were paid in the past, and we have been unable to track down how much money was collected for lights in the past, and we're also not sure how much lights are going to cost for the current light system. So the board made the decision to charge just class five and class six. Mm -hmm. $25 an hour for light. Yep. And once we have some more data on the cost of the light, we'll probably be coming to again with another revision for the cost of the light. We just are comfortable charging classes one through four for lights and fear that we'll be overcharging and causing some problems. Okay. Um, were there any other changes? I think was the camp line added, or was Everything that in yellow, yeah. there before? Sorry, everything in yellow is new. Yeah. yeah, those were the changes that were made from last time. Yeah, if I recall, no, I mean, everything the... in yellow is changed from last, the previous permitting process, right? Yeah, correct. Um, does the board have any additional questions on this? I have one question. Yes, Ms. Curran. Um, could you just share where you came up with the $25 for the lights? Um, I don't know, Nancy, do you have any sort of insight into the costs of having a light on? Previously, they were, previously they were being charged $50 um, for the custodial fee and the light. It's our impression that most of that money went to the custodial fee. Okay. With the new light system, it's all going to be done via an app. So there won't be any additional labor costs. It can be set up in advance and put on a phone. Um, so the twenty-five dollars an hour is probably an overcharge, and we're comfortable doing an overcharge on class five and six because those are for profit. And then once we have a better idea of how much this like actually costs an hour, then we can go back to the charging and other classes. So you're going to update it further. Because right now it doesn't say no yeah, charge, it's just blank, so it almost looks like an error. Mm. I think you need to do either or, put no charge and or figure out what that fee is across the board, right? No. I think you said you're not charging anything except class four and five, correct? Five and six. Right? Five and six, yeah. Five and six. So I think. So then put no charge in those fields, because right now it's just blank, whereas in other areas yeah. all across their document, it's clear what is not charged for. See what I'm saying? Yep. Did you hear that, Jennifer? Yep. Uh, Ms. Conley? Yeah, I have a question. What information does the app collect? I think there's, there's an app that they're saying turns it on and off. Yeah, I don't think it collects information, but it it's just means just a, that you can program the lights when you want them to come on. You can program well, when you want them to shut off. And all right. Well, that's what I'm asking. You does can it, do does it, it collect other information? All these apps. You no. Know, if, I'm, if I'm sitting at home and someone says, we have a game and they've got to turn the lights on, I can 
I can just log in and turn the apps on, or whoever has the permission. So they don't need a person there to go flip the switch. Right. You have them on a timer, so you can you can say, okay, we have this field as leased from six to ten every night this week. Lights come on, lights go off. So Karen, it's not like if you rent the field, you're going to have access to the app. No, I understand yeah. that. I'm just saying that usually apps these days collect <laughs> a lot more data than you think they do. So I'm just questioning whether or not that app, in addition to being you being able to turn it on and off, tells you how many hours the lights were on, what kind of usage there was, what kind of what wattage. Yeah, I don't know if the I mean I don't know if the app will tell you that, but the electric bill will tell you that. But I'm sure the app keeps track of when the lights are on. I don't know whether they keep track of power usage, but they'll tell you when the lights are on. Absolutely. Well, since I don't know what the app does other than turn <laughs> it on and off, I guess I'll. And stop. if you don't like someone in the middle of the game, just <laughs> yeah, just shut it off. <laughs> it's not going your way. Shut it off. Uh, anyone else on the board? I'll, I'll just make. A, oh, go ahead, Andrew. I, just, I, I guess I had a general question about why how the nonprofit classification is just a C3. I mean, aren't there other classifications like 501C? Isn't like the American Legion, like 501C7 or other ones? I see that it's it's classified by the Attorney General. General, I would just hate to see a veterans group or some other group that is a nonprofit that may be classified differently, not have access or like South Shore Peer Recovery. I don't even know if they're a C3, if they could be something else for them to be a nonprofit, but it, that's just a tax classification. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be careful that we're not going to. Mara, do you want to address that question? It's a good point. I'm having a hard time hearing everybody, which oh. is understandable in these circumstances. But, uh, could you repeat what you just said, um, please? You're behind the thing, too. Oh. oh. The, uh, so, so I guess I was wondering why a 501c3 only, I think there are other tax classifications such as for veterans groups that are, I don't know the numbers, I think there's over 20 or something, uh, non-profit classifications. I would just hate to not have a, a rec group or a veterans group or some other, the, the South Shore Peer Recovery, which is a non-profit, I don't, know, I don't know if technically they're a C3, uh, they may be, but another group not have access. So I was just curious why it's only a C3. Uh, where did we think that, that it's only a C3? Um, I, I, I'm looking at my... On page uh, 68, uh, under proof of nonprofit status, you it specifically calls oh, out... on the front page, I got yeah, it, yeah. okay. Um, yeah. Um, because the majority of them that used to rent this and when we, we formed this many years ago were 50123 and we're, we're just um, youth organizations and adult organizations. And you're right, there are quite a few nonprofits and they're not only 50123. I think that would be on a case by case situation. Mm -hmm. We have that uh, ability now that we have a field coordinator when they put in a a, uh, an application for rental of a facility about people go over it pretty good and then contact the people via the question. Like we we already sent um state out to the the, um, the recovery people. We we treat them exactly the same way as anybody else. I, I don't think there'll be any discriminatory things about this, but we can actually take that out and put on Just and put something else in there, people for us. Let's see. Why don't you just add or other comparable nonprofit organizations? Something along that. You know, at the discretion of your commission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would, okay. would that work for you, Mr. Goodrich? Yeah, I okay. think that's a very good point. Good point. Um, any other questions? Just, yep. Yeah, just one final comment. I, I just want to commend the, the commission um, and all the participants in going through this. It was a long process, and they really dissected every single component of this. And not only did they try and um, adapt to the few key things that they were talking about, but they tweaked the whole process. So they really read the whole document 
and added word and verbiage and things that they said weren't going exactly the way we wanted to. So, so Mora and your your whole, and Jen and your whole teams did a great job on this. And I think part of their goal is to review it annually, if not, you know, every other year, to make sure it's up to date. So, good job on that. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Thank you. But I totally agree with the review every year. I think that's that's something we look at all the time. Anyway, uh, if we started that back a few years ago, and I, because of all the new facilities and the, the, they're coming up beautifully, by the way, um, we we should be looking at this more carefully with what we have now. Great. Um, Good. Any other questions? Anyone waiting to ask questions? Nancy? No, I can turn on Q&A. All right, we'll turn on Q&A just in case. If someone wants to talk about the recreational fees and permits, then uh, please hit star six. No music? Yes. <laughs> All right, no one's waiting in the queue. We'll close Q&A. Q&A session is over. Would someone like to provide a motion? I move the Board of Selectmen accept the draft for permitting the fields and gym facilities for the town of Situate. As amended. As amended. <laughs> second. Uh, moved by Mr. Vignani, second by Ms. Curran. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, that motion passes 5 0. Thank you again to Thank the you. Rec Commission and to uh, Mara's team for all this work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. Um, we will go on to some new business. Oh, there it is. <laughs> okay, I just have that's uh, what I was afraid of. <laughs> um, well, it was just the two, it was just us because that's your computer. I don't know if we have to. Do I dial back in just in case? I suppose I should. There's no motion. Two more votes. Oh, wait, there are. I'm sorry. Yeah, two more votes. Yeah. Um, I said I was going to just to be There you go. That's quite a now you know why I didn't touch it. Thank you for choosing freeconferencecall.com. There you go. <laughs> But we are, we're ahead of schedule. You are doing So maybe, maybe we should, while we're getting back our tech, um, talk about our liaisons to boards and committees. That does not require a voter input from others. Um, you should all have a list of all of our boards and commissions um, available and who the current liaison is. Obviously, we will need to replace the esteemed Mr. Harris on some places. I did have one question. Jim, should the charter review be on this list? I would think, because we formed a commission and yeah. it's not, that's the only one I. Why would you have a liaison to that committee? You have a member on that committee. We assign, well, Tony and. Tony. Yeah. yeah. We had liaisons. We, well, were I they was voting the, members? Yeah. On the committee, yeah. Oh, so they're voting members, that's why. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Um, and then the other question I had are there any on here that aren't active anymore, that anyone who's got an assignment that, you know, for a long time our veteran services was pretty defunct and thanks to Tony and Kim Stewart, it is now robust again. Kim Stewart. <laughs> um, the only one that jumped out on me, are we, is, have we finished up the master, the Harbor Resilience Master Plan? It's still in the final phases? Yeah. Okay. That was the only one that I wondered. Okay. Um, so traditionally the board chair takes some of the um, assignments so shall I take shall we run through those first and then reassign sure. the rest so advisory committee I would think um, the financial forecast no that's not no or is um, that one you want to retain yeah okay um, the Plymouth one. Oh yeah and the beach I mean the street acceptance Street acceptance as a chair, usually? Okay. Yeah. All right. Those are the three that... So, Michelle, well, okay. So, we'll start at the top. So, advisory, I will stay on. Affordable, affordable Housing Trust, Mara has been on. Want to retain. Sure. Uh, Animal Control Board, Ms. Connolly. 
never been. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Do they need? Would we reassign that then? <laughs> Is it is it a functioning board? Has they have they met? That's my question. They though. do meet. They do. Yeah. I never. It's usually sporadic, and it's uh, you know, if there's an incident. Okay. Oh, yeah, all right, right, right. Time. All right. Incident. So. I like that. Um, all right. Yeah. And well, on that note, I just remind any board or committee chair that's listening to please remember to post your agendas properly so that we don't miss something. <laughs> Uh, the next is Beach, Beach Commission, which I have been on, and I'm, I'm happy to stay on unless somebody is very much wants to. Beautification, Maura? Yeah, I just started that, so I'm happy to stay on. Okay. Uh, Sean was on the Board of Health. Um, you're interested? This, yeah, there were some issues that were... That could be. That could be related. bubbling up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so... You want to arm wrestle? Do, uh, okay, then yeah. I'll do it. <laughs> I would, you know, Andrew. If there's some of mine that you yeah. want, or mine, just yeah, just because we don't have to stick with the same okay. ones. I mean, there's a couple that make sense in terms of right continuation, but there's others that don't. So if if you have an interest in some of them, let me know. And I'm well, he did okay. say water resources, and Ms. Conley was willing to trade on that, right? Yes, I am. Okay, so. And then uh, you expressed interest in the Historic Commission, yeah. and that was Sean's. So we put <coughs> him there. So, yeah, we want to make sure we div divvy up. So that's one, two, two for you right now. So, yeah, we'll have to find some. So uh, who's doing Board of Health? Madam Board of Chair? Health will be uh, Karen Connolly. Oh. Bylaw Revision Commission. Is that active? No. It's only as needed? Jen has a doornail. Do we even have anyone we assigned have, to that commission? We have one. I, think I don't we think don't, we have enough I think people. We have one member. Okay. I think, you know, at our retreat, I want to just talk about whether or not we want to revise. We are supposed to have one by charter. I mean, it's a, Oh, it's, it's a, a charter? A, okay. It can be an important committee, oh, yeah. but it's just like. Well, we have three, four bylaws on the agenda, or for the warrant, and no think, bylaw review has been done by the, that commission, have they? It should be. Yeah. And citizens okay. should be able to go to the bylaw review committee according to the charter to help them craft okay. either amendments or whatever, but there's no one to go to. Okay. Well that's a good thing to push on then. Um you would you like to stay in that? Yeah, role? I mean yeah. <laughs> okay. Cable television advisory, Ms. Kern has been involved. Is anyone else interested? I'll keep it only because we're in the middle of an initiative that we need to kind of wrap up and get in front of the board. Okay. And after that, I'm happy to give them away. <laughs> uh, capital oh, planning give them away. <laughs> yeah. Capital planning committee has been uh, Ms. Connolly. Was anyone else interested? I'm happy to give it to someone else if they would like. You want to do that, Andrew? I think capital. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Is that so, Andrew? You're going to take capital? Yes. Okay. All right. And for those who don't know, Mr. Goodrich has come to us from the advisory group, so he is familiar with a lot of these issues. So thank you, Andrew. Uh, Coastal Advisory has been Maura and Sean shared that responsibility. So there's an open spot on that. Um, I assume we still want to keep two. Doesn't matter. If someone else wants in, I doesn't, I've been on it for a long time. If somebody wants an opportunity to sit and see, or I'll keep it. You know. We do have flood maps coming up, so it will be a... It, there will be some robust conversation, so it could be some heavy lifting this year. I can keep it. Do you want to keep it? I, I'll help you. You want to share? To back you up. Okay. Okay. K2 will share. Commission on Disabilities, Mr. Vignani, you've been on there for a while. Yeah, I can. If someone else wants it, you can take yeah, it. I can I'll take, you it, yeah. take that. Okay, Andrew. Um, Community Preservation Act. Um, Mr. Vignani and Ms. Connolly have had that, and typically there's two people on there. Uh, Yes. I can, yeah, I can stay. Okay. Um, Conservation Commission, Ms. Curran is currently there. Um, is you know, I, I'm happy to uh, trade and um, take um, the Waterways Commission and have someone else do conservation. Again, I've been, I've been the lead yeah, there so for six years. Yeah, Sean Harris was on waterways, so that is open. Um, is somebody interested in taking conservation? So my question about conservation is, do you have to be in person at every meeting? No. no. All right, because a lot of times they're just doing 
you know, a lot of conditions hearing. and yeah, plans. Yeah, a lot of hearings. And, right. and, yeah. But they do look for guidance sometimes. Yeah. I went a lot in the beginning, and then yeah. recently, obviously, with all of this, no. Yeah, no, I'm glad to do that then. Okay. So Conservation Commission will go to Karen Connolly. Um, Council on Aging, we talked a little bit about that. So I've been doing that. Um, I think between that and the Public Building Commission, since the building is under construction, I'm happy to stay, but with the chair's responsibilities, if somebody else wants to, to step up, it's going to be some heavy lifting on that, obviously, for the coming year. So want me to keep if it? You, do you want to continue? or? Um, yeah, I I. I I think we'd as you want me to share it with you and if you can't make it I can do yeah. it also whatever you want um, no you, you know there it? is the continuity I think it's important because we've been it okay involved. then you, so you want to share that one sure okay um, economic development commission um, <laughs> been very involved in that one lately I'm happy to stay on but I um, this the, they're very much involved with the um, leadership of the Citrus loves local which, if all goes well, will transition to more traditional chamber things by the end of phase three, and they'll get back to their job advising us on economic development. Um, Why don't you stay on that? So I think I should stay on it, um, but I think maybe down the road that might be something that someone else might want to transition to. Uh, financial forecast you're staying on. Mr. Goodrich is on historic. Housing, Mara, do you want to continue with housing? Sure, because it goes with affordable housing trust. Um, I'm a library trustee as the geek on board. I'm happy to stay on that. If anybody else is desperate to work with the trustees, I will relinquish. Seeing none, planning board. Um, I would like, if somebody is interested in working on the planning board, that's a liaison. It's, it, it is helpful with, um, to be involved, but to your point, it's one that I look to see at the, what's on the agenda and attend as necessary, but they're an elected board, so it's really more just to keep all of us informed of what they're doing. Does anybody have a burning desire? I'm happy to keep it if no one wants to jump on planning. Was that a wave, Mr. Goodridge, or are you just thinking? I was thinking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right, I'll keep it unless well, what nights it's, yeah. it's, it's Thursday night. It's to pick you know, the same board for all the same nights, too. So they're Thursdays? It's a Thursday night board. Okay. Yep. I think Waterways is Thursdays, too, right? It, it is. Yep. Um, all right, I'll keep that. Tony, I, I'll take Plymouth County. Sean Harris was on Public Building Commission. As I mentioned, we had um, we have the Senior Center um, on there. I was on with him because of Council on Aging. Um, I would be happy to keep on it just to keep an eye on the Council on Aging building, but um, does somebody want to participate in that in Sean's stead? Okay, Mr. Goodrich. Um, it's a great group. Recreation, we have Andrew and Anthony. School committee, um, uh, school committee, I've got notes all over. We have Mr. Vignani, Ms. Connolly. Is that a typical, is that usually a board chair or is that a? No, it's anyone, but if someone wants to do it, I mean, I, I typically look at the agenda and if they need me, I go there, but you know, similar to conservation, I'm yeah. not going to sit through right, they're a an elected project board. of a house doing right. something or other. Well, and I think they just need someone they know they can call. Right. Now, the question is, you know, is this, it's potentially because they're so different in terms of their authority um, that it could be a chair to chair. You got a big It budget. hasn't, but if you want to, I don't, if you want to do it, you certainly can. Um, I think with all the transitions that's going on there, I would like to, to yeah, get There may with want that. to be a financial component, though. Maybe maybe you and I should do it because they're going to have some budget. Yeah, it's gonna, they're going to find three-quarters of a million dollars this year. Well, and calling, yeah. potentially the school building. Yeah, and, a, and that's going to be big. So would you be comfortable with Mr. Benani and I? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that changes the um, Harbor um, Resilience Master Plan, I assume you'll stay, stay on, on that, that for the duration. Chamber of Commerce. Um, Mara, you're on that? Sure. Okay. Um, I'll Sean? Do the shelf. Okay, you're to take shellfish? Sure. Okay, so Mr. Vignani on shellfish. Sister City, France, and Ireland. Mr. Vignani, you are currently on that? Yeah. Okay. Um, South Shore Coalition, Mara, and Sean was. Um, 
that is through MAPC. Um, does somebody want to share that with? I can. You can? Okay. I cannot. <laughs> uh, Street Acceptance Committee, that's me. Traffic Rules and Regs was Sean Harris. Long standing fun committee. It meets at 5 30 on Mondays or something. Mondays or something. Um, but um, it's, it is a very forward, a public forward uh, committee because people come in and they want things fixed. Um, so would somebody like to take over those big shoes of Mr. Harris? Ms. Connolly, all right. Uh, Mr. Vignani, you're in Veterans. Would you like to continue with I that? I can Okay. Uh, water Resources, Andrew's going to move over to that. Widow Waterway Commission was Mr. Harris, and you said you wanted that, Ms. Curran. Widow's Walk, Mr. Vignani, Ms. Curran. Do you want to continue with that through the hopefully construction? Sure. And the last is important liaison to another elected board, the Zoning Board of Appeals. It was Mr. Harris and Ms. Curran, so there is a liaison position available, but to that's not one you it's one you rarely go to, I would think. Right? It's just to keep for information. So you guys <laughs> wait, let's see. Andrew, you've got one. Rock, paper, one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six. So Karen, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So if we balanced it, it goes to Ms. Connolly. Did you say seven? No, I think I have six. One, two. Oh. oh, now we're going to flip a coin. Rock, paper, scissors. Anyone have a burning desire? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not All burning, right. but I didn't do it. <laughs> All right, we'll give it to Mr. Goodrich then. Okay. Michelle, I can review that with you. Great. Now we will go back <coughs> to discussion, vote of a Hawker's Peddler's License for Nona's ice cream truck. Um, is anyone waiting to talk about that? Okay. Um, all the documentation is in order. Nona's Ice Cream is located in the harbor, and they have a truck. They've been um, providing this for years. I don't know how many years. Yeah. Anyone have any questions? No. Anybody want ice cream? Yeah. <laughs> I'll make a comment and then a motion. Um, Nona's does a great job um, not only providing awesome ice cream, but also the charitable work within the town is just phenomenal. They're at every school event giving out ice cream to kids. They're at every charitable organization uh, donating ice cream. So um, that family um, does a, a lot for the community, and we, we, we appreciate it a lot. Like um, so I'm happy to give them this. I move the Board of Selectmen approve the Hawker Pedal License for Nona's Homemade Inc. for the 2020 season. Do I have a second? Second. A uh, motion by Mr. Vignani, second by Ms. Curran. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes 5-0. The next is a discussion vote on the Davis parking lot <coughs> renewal. Um, I don't think anyone's waiting to talk to us about this. Mr. Bedreau, would you care to enlighten us on this request? The parking lot renewal? Mm -hmm. It's been there. Same thing every year. So, parking lot in Hamark, he owns it. He asked for permission to keep it running. And uh, I forget what he charges. Do you remember, Tony? It's like $5 a car. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, this is, we do this every year. Great. Any other discussion? Nope. Move the Board of Selectmen approve to renew the parking lot license to Davis Family Trust, the Davis parking lot for the 2020 season. Second. Motion by Mr. Vignani, second by Ms. Kern. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. <coughs> uh, liaison reports. Mr. Vignani, would you like I to I have speak? none. You have none? Ms. Kern? I have one. Um, the Beautification Commission has voted to postpone Ship Shake Day for all of 2020. Oh. So I would ask residents to do their best to go out their driveways and walk to the left and walk to the right, you know, 100 feet, 100 yards, and, and pick up your on the side of the roads. Um, if you can, it would be really helpful. I do that when I walk my dog, picked up a nice case of Bud Light every other night that's sitting on the side of the road. So <laughs> it, people throw stuff out of their car windows. So pick it up and stop throwing things out the car windows. So we uh, and don't put them in town barrels and don't put them in town barrels. <laughs> Although I'd rather be there than um, on the side in the woods. So um, yeah, so it's unfortunate, but um, I think we together as a town can 
pull it together and keep our town clean. Great. Ms. Conley? I hear there are transfer station stickers available if people want to take their <laughs> garbage to the dump. <laughs> um, yeah, just want to mention that there is a beautiful video on Situate Community Television mm -hmm. that Seth produced um, showing people the Mordecai Lincoln property, the house the, oh. and the two mm -hmm. um, buildings on the property, plus an aerial, aerial view, and it's a really beautiful property, so I hope people get a chance to look at it. It's on Situate Community Television YouTube. So. Can we Facebook that? Has it gone out as a Facebook notice? That'd be nice. Yeah, we can share it. Yeah. Nice to do that. I did actually get a resident on Mordecai Lincoln call me today to say, you know, is there anything out there? So I pointed her to that video. So yes. that would yes. be good to share. Good. Um, It'll be on the warrant this Saturday. I, I know the committee thanks Seth a lot for the work he did on it. So um, okay. that's, that's what I have. That you have. Mr. Goodrich doesn't have liaison. Would you have anything like you add? No, I've not yet liaised. So. You can liaise next time. <laughs> um, and Madam Clerk, have we any correspondence? Not that I'm aware. <laughs> There's some in your in the packet. Let's break her in. It'll be fun. Let's ask questions. <laughs> Which one is it? So. There is, let's see, at the bottom of the um, thing, there's a, a letter from the uh, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Department of Tem Telecommunications. I guess I didn't see it. All right. right here. Oh. Well, you just, you don't have to read it, just no. a quick synopsis. It was the rate, isn't it rate chart? It's the public hearing announcement for rates. Yeah. Right. So, thank you, thank you. Yep. there's three yeah. Okay, three correspondences. One from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the Department of Telecommunications and Cable. Um, it's regarding the petition of Comcast Cable to establish and adjust the basic service tier program equipment and installation rates for the communities in Massachusetts served by Comcast that are currently subject to rate regulations. I know this is a big issue for everyone in town, that Comcast is the only game in town, but that's the way it is, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that gives you, pro that's public comment, so they can. Okay, we have uh, communications from Seth Pickering of the Department of um, Environmental Protection uh, regarding the Town of Situate, Situate Wind Sound Level Compliance Evaluation Report dated March 6, 2020. Um, a resident wrote to them and asked them to look at the report that was submitted to this board by Epsilon back in March. I looked it up today, I think it was March 24th. Um, I know that that will be that report will be on our agenda at some point in when we can hopefully have people come in. Mm -hmm. um, and a, an email from Jennifer Kuhn regarding the town website and posting of agendas. Um, she notes that some departments and committees do it and some don't. Um, I will say that in my experience, the reason why some committees are better at doing it than others is some committees actually have paid staff to post their agendas and post their minutes. Others do not. So um, I know that we all strive as committee members and volunteers to do the best we can to comply with all the laws. But you know, if, if someone points out that there is a committee that has consistently not posted agendas or minutes, I encourage them to call the Board of Selectmen office to, to say that you know committees should do that. We all understand, but it's not always easy. Yes, I, I would like to comment that, on that. I think she did raise a good point, though, just kind of understanding where some of the recorded um, pieces are, and maybe we can help our committees just say whether, I mean, most of it does say Zoom, or most of it will say SCTV, but maybe some residents still aren't really familiar what Zoom is or what the difference is, so maybe we should call it out a little bit better. I looked at some of her samples, and I, some of it, yeah, I think no, it could would be adjusted. Well, again, most of our committees are not broadcast live, and some of them aren't even taped. But now that we're in the age of Zoom right. and COVID, I think people's expectations are now that they will be able to participate remotely. And you know what? Maybe that's a benefit of this crazy thing that's happened to us, that people will have the opportunity. I actually got a phone call related to will we be um, broadcasting live town meeting and uh, Seth told me we don't have a Comcast signal out there, but that you were checking the Facebook possibility? We are, we're still looking into that. Please. All right, so folks, you know, you've got to recognize we're now outside in the field and whether or not we can actually provide you with live access mm -hmm. is, you know, they're working on it, so. Yeah, 
We're all adjusting. But it will be filmed for later. Oh, yeah. So if you don't get to see it live, you'll probably get to see it later. Yeah. So the thing about filming or, or having live on town meeting is we want to encourage people to attend because it is a one person, one vote. So watching on TV is great, but it doesn't make allow you to participate in the process. Well, actually, so. the people I've heard from are people who are afraid to go to town meeting because they've got health oh. issues and they right. would like to be able to see it live. But if it's not possible, you know, it's unfortunate. But um, it will be posted. I think we are trying to accommodate better. those people who are worried about going outside at all. Yeah, that's a very so. good point. Does that conclude correspondence, Madam Clerk? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'll do better next time. Yeah, that's great. Um, <laughs> the, I have big shoes to fill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'd, I'd like to entertain a motion for approval of the meeting minutes. Move to accept the meeting, meeting minutes for the Board of Selectmen <laughs> meeting held on June 16th, 2020. Moved by Mr. Vignani. Second. Second by Mr. Goodrich. Actually, you can't second. You weren't there. He was. Yes, oh, he, was. Was there? he was. It was his first one. Oh, that's right. I thought it was... Uh, it wasn't very memorable. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't even remote. In fact, remote. you should have made the motion. <laughs> we were all here. <laughs> I Moved by Mr. Vignoni, seconded by the very present Mr. Goodrich. Yes. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? So, motion passes 5-0. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. And, oh, that's yeah, actually not right. Session. We're going second session. Right. Uh, that's, it's. I realize. All right, let me find that. Hold on one second. Just a motion to go into executive session, not to reach yeah, But I have to say this. Session. Okay. Uh, the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the governmental body to discuss strategy with respect to potential litigation. The board will not reconvene an open session. Now may I have a motion? Don't we have to give the topic? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. And this will be to discuss issues. Re I can't say that. Issues around shellfish uh, issues around <laughs> pending litigation shellfish I didn't say that I said that earlier all right issues respect to pending litigation for shellfish 